So are you thinking about moving to Arroyo Grande, California? In this video, I'm going to go over some of the pros and cons about living in Arroyo Grande, California. My name is Bruce Carson with Keller Williams Realty Central Coast. I've been here for over 20 years and I had the opportunity to raise three amazing boys uh, here in the Arroyo Grande area. So I've become very familiar and I'm more than happy to share this information with you. So if you stick around until the end of this video too, I have a really good secret about Arroyo Grande to tell you about. So we're gonna get after it right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything about living in Arroyo Grande, California, then subscribe below and hit the bell for notifications. You'll be the first one to know what's happening in Arroyo Grande, California. Again, I'm Bruce Carson with Keller Williams, and uh, I get uh, calls and emails from people just like you and you and you uh, every day, and I absolutely love it. Whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, Give me a call, shoot me a text or an email. All the information is in the description below so I can help you with a smooth move to a Royal Grande. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna walk you through the pros and cons of a Royal Grande and here we go. Okay, well, let's go ahead and let's start with the pros of living in a Royal Grande, California. We have a beautiful environment here. Uh, Oro Grande is very picturesque. We have great landscapes. We have rolling hills. We have beaches. We have vineyards. And um, everything that nature enthusiasts could really want is right here in Oro Grande or close by. So it is a very beautiful place uh, to live. So another pro about Arroyo Grande, even though it is a pretty big town, as I've explained uh, before, it has like a real small town, hometown feel. Especially when you go down to the village of Arroyo Grande. And if you've lived here for, for uh, any amount of time, you're probably gonna run into some people that you know and see smiling faces and families out having a good time. It just really does have that really good small town feel. When we go out with the kids to sporting events, we always know other families and people from the schools because it's just such a small, tight-knit community. So it's just a great feel with this hometown. Um, pro number three is our amazing climate. We do have a very mild climate here in Oro Grande. A lot of Oro Grande is to the east, kind of east of the uh, 101. So we get nice, sunny, warm days here uh, in Oro Grande. The uh, climate here is really considered like a Mediterranean uh, climate. So we have very mild temperatures. It almost never freezes here. And usually once a year, um, we'll get a hot weekend, like two or three days where, you know, it's in the 90s and we actually say, hmm, do I need air conditioning? And then by the time we decide we want air conditioning, the hot air goes away and we realize, oh, that's why nobody has air conditioning in their homes here in a Royal Grande because we don't need it. Open the windows, let that heat blow out and you're good to go. So a Royal Grande is not on the beach but it is very close to the beach. So even if you're on the farthest outskirts of town, way up by, uh, by the lake and out in our little forests, you can still get to the beach in 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how far out you are. But when you're in town, in a Royal Grande proper, pretty much anywhere in town, you should be able to drive to the beach uh, in about 10 minutes or so. So from your home, from your couch, you're probably, about 15 minutes away from actually getting your toes in that chilly Pacific Ocean water. But it is really nice and it's big, uh, gorgeous beaches and a lot of fun stuff to do um, at the beach. Which brings me into another pro of a Royal Grande is we have a lot of great events. We have um, seasonal events throughout the year, like our Harvest Festival that's coming up in uh, September. They're um, fun local events things to put on your calendar. 
and uh, we have an, an activities book that actually comes out for all of the five cities. Arroyo Grande is one of the five cities. So you want to check in with the Arroyo Grande Parks and Rec Department and make sure that you get one of the uh, magazines that they publish uh, because there's all kinds of fun stuff from pickleball and tennis courts to organized sports like softball and dance and yoga. It just goes on and on and on. So again, it's just nice hometown feeling, small town feeling where you go and see your friends and just uh, relax and chill. It's a very chill atmosphere here in Arroyo Grande. Another fun thing to really take advantage of while you're here, if you're into it, is wine country. So we're Arroyo Grande is right in the middle of wine country. We actually have a whole uh, variety of grapes uh, growing here in Arroyo Grande. We have some reds and whites and and uh, lots of different uh, varieties that are growing here. We also have the opportunity, if you're a big wine enthusiast and you want to go and see more wineries, you can go down into Santa Barbara County, you can go up to Paso Robles, and uh, all around us, we're pretty much surrounded by uh, wine. Now, you don't have to be a heavy drinker, you don't have to go out and get drunk to go wine tasting and go and enjoy our local wineries. There are usually vintners on hand and more often than not, the people that I like to talk to when I'm at the wineries are the people that actually grow the grapes. And they can talk about um, all of the interesting soils and, and water and, and why they're growing certain grapes where. So it is a lot of fun. We do produce some really yummy, tasty wines. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up with uh, just a couple more pros. It's kind of hard to stop because I love a Royal Grande. But um, we have a very low crime rate. Uh, the crimes uh, that we do have, uh, well, now that jaywalking is legal here in California, that really decreased the amount of crime we had in Aurora Grande. But, um, you know, it, it's real nominal. Uh, we don't hear about, you know, murders and, and, and bad guys and, and uh, attacks and, and, you know, aggressive uh, bad things happening here in Aurora Grande. Of course, there occasionally is going to be a bad person and we have a lot of people come you know flowing through our area but all in all i don't feel scared i know my kids don't feel scared or concerned for their well-being when they're out walking around a Royal grande during the day or at night so it is a real nice safe comfortable place uh to be now um lastly uh Royal grande has really good schools so all of our schools we're going to feed into a Royal Grande High School, which is a really big high school. Uh, but we also have good middle schools and elementary schools kind of all over the Royal Grande area. We only have one middle school, and that is Paulding Middle School. But we do have another middle school in Pismo Beach that also feeds to a Royal Grande High. So those are eight real good pros about a Royal Grande. I hate to do this, but, and I kind of had to scratch my head a little bit and, and put some effort into coming up with cons for a Royal Grande. But I told you that I would tell you about them, so here we go. Number one con uh, for a Royal Grande, the biggest complaint that I hear is the cost of living. Uh, real estate is expensive here, uh, homes are expensive, and because of the uh, proximity, we're right in between San Francisco and Los Angeles, things like uh, gas gas prices and other commodities because of the transportation and our location. Um, it is uh, expensive to live here. So that is a bummer. Uh, mortgages and rents are very high. I justify them though, real quick, because we don't pay that air conditioning bill and we don't run our heaters that much. So if you're looking to move from another area, say from a cold part of the country, well, one, during the wintertime, uh, you don't have to crank up that heater, and two, you can actually go outside during the wintertime and enjoy a Royal Grande outside. So another con about a Royal Grande is limited job opportunities. Um, 
we we have a lot of retail we have a lot of restaurants and such but as far as uh, large companies that pay the salaries that justify the mortgages and the rent here in a Royal Grande, we could really use uh, more of those jobs. It would be uh, great, but unfortunately, over the whole entire time that I've been here, it has been a, a downfall and challenging to find a good paying job that's going to cover all the expenses for a family here in a Royal Grande. Um, occasionally, we do get some traffic congestion. Uh, a couple times during the year, during holidays, when it's really popular, especially 4th of July, we do get uh, a, some traffic congestion. The highway slows down a little bit. And then um, we also get hit with traffic sometimes when I-5, like during the winter time, sometimes the grapevine gets uh, snowed in and they close it. So if I-5, which is the main north and south uh, highway going up and down, California, if that ever shuts down, everyone is sent over to Highway 101 and they're going to come right through Pismo Beach. So sometimes uh, we get some traffic congestion, but if you're local, you can always take side streets and back streets and go around that traffic. So even though it's a con, it's not that bad and it never really lasts very long. We do get crowds of tourists though with that traffic. Uh, especially during the summertime. So uh, because of our Mediterranean, very cool, mild climate, we have a lot of people that come over from the hotter areas, hotter regions of California, especially out east. So in the valley, Bakersfield, Fresno, even up north of us, Paso Robles and Tascadero, all of these uh, areas during the summertime, they get hot. I mean, it's 100 plus degrees while we're sitting here in a Royal Grande in the upper 60s and low 70s. So you can see why people would flood in on the weekends uh, just to cool down and have the opportunity to get outside and turn that air conditioning off. So that's a con as well. Another con that I've heard, especially from uh, my kids when I was bringing them up, is that uh, there is limited entertainment. So we have local entertainment. We have little bands playing and, and events uh, throughout the Central Coast and in our little towns. But as far as like the big entertainment, big concert venues and everything, we do need to drive either to the Bay Area or to Los Angeles, Santa Barbara areas to uh, gain access to some of the larger, bigger entertainment events and venues that people are used to from the big cities. Me personally, I feel a little bit spoiled because of our proximity with these cities, because we have, um, you know, the drive is usually about three hours to either of the cities, San Francisco or LA. But if you look at the Bay Area and LA, look at all the professional sporting teams that we have access to. So uh, there's a lot and we get to choose who we go and see. So it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. Um, with our limited entertainment. Another con is we do have uh, limited public transportation. So it's a very common problem in California. We just weren't set up with infrastructure, so we have no subway system. We do have uh, some buses uh, that run and a trolley that takes us down to Avila Beach, uh, but we really could use more uh, public transportation because so if you don't have a car um, it is challenging to get to all of the places that you want to go in a Royal Grande because it is big and it is spread out and even when we get out uh, to the outskirts of a Royal Grande it blends into the San Luis Obispo County and just keeps going on and on so you can be far away from the center and uh, public transportation would be nice but it is getting better over the decades that I've lived here I have seen a great improvement with the public transportation. So let's just hope that they continue to do that because our area is growing. They are adding in uh, more uh, housing opportunities. And so we're going to have more people moving to our area. So uh, I hope that the planning is in place to continue to build up the public transportation here in the Rio Grande area. A similar, you know, growing up here in California, uh, we've always dealt with droughts, except for this year, 
we finally got our lakes filled. All of our local lakes are filled, but um, it is just an ongoing problem that we have water restrictions and we have drought situations and drought threats here. Uh, up until last year, we even had big, you know, flashing street signs, save water, conserve water, let your lawns, you know, die, um, save, save, save. Uh, now that all of our reservoirs and lakes are full, our aquifers uh, filled up quite a bit from last year's rains, which is really nice. But we're all staying in conservation mode with that water because the drought's not going anywhere. And we'll be back into another threatening situation sometime in the future. Hopefully not too, uh, not too soon. Um, and then lastly for cons is uh, it is again just a little bit isolated here uh, from urban amenities. Um, so if we don't have all of the, the chain restaurants and again all of the big venues and big fun activities uh, to go see. We're a little bit smaller. We have the mom and pop one off restaurants. Um, you know, occasionally we'll see a chain here. but. Um, you know, that's just a part of living in a small town. So there you go. That's a Royal Grande, California, uh, the pros and the cons. Now, I did tell you, if you stick around to the end, that I have a great uh, secret to share with you about a Royal Grande, and that is our lake. Lake Lopez, yes, we have a lake. And like I just mentioned, it is actually full and it looks great. The lake hasn't been full for 25 full years. And uh, this summer, we have a full lake. It's not a giant lake, but it's a Royal Grande. So we have nice, mild weather up at the lake. The water stays cool and refreshing. You can go up there. A lot of people like to windsurf um, and fish. Now uh, you can bring your boats up there, sailboats, uh, power boats, and it's just right here in town. So uh, from the village of Arroyo Grande to putting your boat into Lake Lopez, if you were uh, to do that, it would probably be about 30 to 35 minutes um, from the village to you floating around on your boat. So Lake Lopez is a great place to go. We have camping up there. There are water slides at Lake Lopez and there's even uh, some new zip lines that you can do. So you can go up for day hikes. You can camp for weeks if you want. There's all kinds of great stuff to do up at Lake Lopez. Even if you just take the kids up to swim for the day in the, in the lake, uh, you're probably going to see some great wildlife out there. We have a lot of wild turkeys, deer. Uh, I've seen bears up there. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, it's gives a nice rural feeling and you can get out there uh, and enjoy uh, the outdoor wilderness without a big drive. And it's not a big commitment to go up there. And also we just got a big upgrade just a few years ago. Now we have cell service at the lake. So if you're going up there, to camp, uh, you can stay there. Your cell phones are going to work at the campgrounds. Whereas before, up until just a couple of years ago, we would have to drive um, down to the base of the dam for our cell phones to uh, to work properly. So that is, uh, that's it. Wrapping up, pros and cons. You heard about uh, my big secret for Royal Grande. If there's ever anything that I can do to help you with a smooth, easy transition to a Royal Grande. Again, call, text, email anytime. Bruce Carson Realtor. Thanks.